the thing that I have been thinking a lot in, in concert with um, a lot of other women, obviously, in my life, is that women are saving men's sports. And there's so many different examples of this. And let me just ring them down. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome wow. to A Touch More Live, presented by Geico. We are super hyped to be here. Um, super excited that you guys came to join. This started out as, you probably know, an Instagram live show when we're all really bored during the pandemic. And now we have a super fancy stage and an audience. We're here, look at us, look at us. Normally we would do some sort of intro about each other and uh, you know, a rundown of part of the bio, but I feel like you guys know. It's not even about us, it's about the fact that you guys know. So we're not even gonna do that. I'm Megan, this is Sue. Welcome to A Touch More Live. Here we go. All right, so if you did tune in to the IG Live, you know that we would start off with a little bit of a check-in. Usually it was in the form of shoes, which we got a little something-something going yeah. on today. This is actually the perfect depiction of our personalities in shoes. It's yes. the same thing, but different. Yes. I do different. see some uh, Keep Sue Freshes there, hey. so shout out, shout, shout out. Shout them out. Um, but Megan and I actually started going to couples therapy a couple years ago, and something that our therapist does that we want to share is when we sit in the seat, which is our couch, she says, so where are we? So where are we? So Megan, where are we? This is Cleveland. <laughs> See, people know it here. My friend told me, Natalie, who I think is in here, she's like, the slogan around here is, this is Cleveland. I know, she actually told me this like, before the show. It. I was like, I have no, yeah. what? I so thank it. you for everybody who, who gets it. We are in Cleveland, Ohio, um, also known as Believeland. Some people say that. <laughs> For the women's final four, I feel like the city should just be named, renamed the women's final four. <laughs> Complete, completely taking over. Um, it's unbelievable here. Uh, we obviously were at the games last night. Who's at the games last night? Everybody in here? I'm still trying to recover. It was, it was insane. Um, I want to get uh, some real basketball knowledge here because I'm... <laughs> I don't, is that me? Or? It's you. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's not me. I just, Honestly, I don't know what I'm saying about stuff. Um, tell me your thoughts about the games last night. Obviously, the first game, South Carolina versus NC State, um, wasn't that close. The last the last game was. So break it down for us, Sue. There's not much of a breakdown on that one. Um, I think NC State had come into the game hot. Nobody expected them to be there, which is a wonderful storyline. They're only one of, I think, two teams to ever start the season unranked and then make it to the Final Four. The other one was UW. Shout out Plum. She's a dog. Um, so that was exciting, and I think everyone was kind of waiting to see, is the magic going to continue? And absolutely not. It did not continue. South Carolina had a lot to say about that. Yeah. Um, Hold up. They are just really good, and, and they're falling victim to what a lot of great teams in the past have fallen victim to, which is, you're so good, people don't talk about you. You're so great, you're so dominant, people don't talk about you. Um, that's just one of the sad things about sports at times. People take greatness for granted, but we're watching it in South Carolina. They played great, a little bumpy in the first half, whatever, whatever, but then they took over, they had control. So that's really the assessment there. And then we can move on to, to UConn, Iowa. Do you wanna give your UConn, Iowa take? Oh my God, that's so much. Um, <laughs> It was stressful. It she was take, stressful. She does take on the Yukon bias a little bit. It's like osmosis. I'm trying to get kicked out of my own house. I mean, well, I'm not trying to, this is, I'm not stupid, you know? I do stupid things, but I'm not stupid. Um, I do love Yukon, even though sometimes I'm like, what's really, like, what's going on? It's you know what, why, why, don't you, why don't you speak to the atmosphere? Because you were, oh, obviously, okay. Dee and I were yeah. doing our show. Fun fact about that. We don't really get to watch as much as I'd like because we're interviewing guests, we're kind of trying to pay attention to that. So we catch moments, but this time our little perch is kind of outside of all of the fans. So we mm -hmm. didn't. So tell me what the atmosphere was like. The atmosphere was, I would say, a little anxious, especially in the first half. Um, a little bit lower scoring than I think everybody was expecting. Um, Caitlin didn't get going until the second half. Um, I think both teams kind of got going more in the second half, so it was, it was a little nervy, but I feel like for both teams, anytime 
Paige hit a bucket or anytime Caitlin even rose up to shoot, like the whole arena just erupted. Um, it was fun. It's honestly, shout out to you fans for watching games. I, I, it's so hard to watch <laughs> games and be excited and like, you know, get your hot dog and have your drink and talk to your friends. And like, uh, my one friend was there and she had the phone out and she had D and Sue in her ear, but she was watching the game. Like it's, it, there's so much going on at one time, but I had so many moments also where I just sort of like went outside myself and looked up and was like, this is incredible. This is unbelievable. Huge UConn section cheering, huge Iowa section cheering. Um, the entire stadium full. Women's sports so up right now. It just was like a really, yeah, it was a, what? It was a really, really special um, atmosphere. So are we going to talk about it? I think we have to. Oh, we're going to talk about it, right? You guys want to talk about it? What? what? Was it a foul? No. What, what happened? Was it a foul? All right, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Oh, we got the table. We got oh, table we got coming table. in. Time out for the table. Time out for the table. We are parched. Yeah. Honestly, I come to this weekend, ever since we've been doing the Burton Tarasi show, and I think I lose like a year off my life. <laughs> Minimum. With this alcohol intake. Whew. It's perfect. Um, but, you know. Was it a foul? Okay, okay. It was a foul. Yeah. Listen, listen. It was, wasn't True it? True story. True story. I hate it. It was. Watching it, so this, this moment, Dee and I were able to pay attention, and watching it with the angle that ESPN was giving in the moment, it looked like, don't call that. It kind of looked like, what? And then after the game, somebody was showing me like someone had posted a different angle on Twitter, and then you're like, Okay, it was a foul. Oh, man. But I'm still a proponent of let the players decide. It has to be super, super egregious. That was on the borderline, so I'm kind of like, what are you going to do? I, if I was an, an yeah. Iowa fan, I would have been like, foul. Yeah. <laughs> I actually am an Iowa fan. Shout out Iowa. It's not about that. If my bias, if, if, if I wasn't a UConn alum, that's, that's what I should have said. I do, I do think that it was one of those things. It wasn't like that lost the game from, I, I think Iowa no, deserved. It never does. I think Iowa deserved to win the game, and frankly, for the storylines, I was like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Are you there kidding? Has South Carolina, Iowa is in the final. <laughs> what? We deserve this. That's we true. really the do. The rematch. So, tell me your thoughts. Yeah, no, there's been thoughts. incredible storylines, right? Just talked about NC State, UConn and all their injuries. I mean, literally every team, Juju, USC, putting them back on the map. I could go down the list of the whole Elite Eight. What did I say when the Elite Eight was starting? I was like, oh my God, this literally might be the best slate of women's college basketball in one day I've ever, ever seen. I mean, that's the type of talent, storylines. Um, but then you fast forward to these two teams, the two teams Ooh. left. Ooh. And they both everything. feel like they have destiny connected to them. Yeah. One is trying to fulfill an undefeated season that they couldn't do last year. The other is riding this wave, this Caitlin Clark effect, right? Iowa has shown up. I mean, the one thing I did notice late in the game was those Iowa fans. Woo. That was loud. Oh, my God. So we're literally seeing, like, two streams of destiny. Yeah. And the storylines couldn't have been better. They really couldn't have been better. Because, you know, we're in a moment. We are. We're in a moment. What I'm hearing... You say, Sue. You tell me. Is, what you um, <laughs> well, let me tell you what I'm thinking. Women's sports are all the way up. <laughs> all the way up. Well, let, me just, let me just do rattle some, off some, some stats and some numbers stats. here. Uh, let me talk about it. ESPN selection show for the tournament. Almost 2 million viewers, up 50% from last year. <laughs> Uh, ESPN also sold out the entire lineup of sponsorships and ads for the women's championship. <laughs> Obviously. That's like a no-brainer for ad people. Uh, the most watched tournament on record. Incredible. First round, up 70%. Second round, up 121%. Sweet 16, up 96%. Elite 8 averaged 6.2 million viewers per game. Cross them all. Unbelievable. Where am I at? That is up 184%. Attendance for the first two rounds, 292,000 people. There's more. There's more. I gotta, I gotta do the switch. We gotta do the cards. Elite eight game, 
Iowa versus LSU averaged 12 million viewers. The most watched college basketball game ever on an ESPN platform. The most watched college basketball game ever on an ESPN platform. That's crazy. It peaked at 16 million. Um, I already have an email out to the manager about the 4 million people that left. I'm not, I'm not sure when. That, maybe at the end of the game it did, it did slow down a little bit. Um, the highest audience for any basketball game since 2012. It was, it was crazy. Um, as you guys know, Final Four tickets are sold out. You probably got your tickets like months or years ago. Um, <laughs> going for two grand. We actually had a friend who was like, sorry to just burn time right now. He was like, no, I think after everything is set, things are gonna go down. It's like the Super Bowl when teams get out. And I'm like, I don't think it's like that. It's not how this works. I don't think we're it's like not how that, this Tommy. Works. Yeah. But we're those, not like uh, that. Those stats are incredible, and, and Megan, do you know what I'm hearing? What are you hearing? Everybody watches women's sports. Everybody watches women's sports. <laughs> Shout out. I see the t-shirts everywhere. I see all the different colors. We're seeing it all over the country. No, and I think now is a time, it's, it's really important that we start to, to reset narratives that have been out there, because um, everybody does watch women's basketball, the bars are fill, mm. full. Mm. The joke is not funny. Um, what do you think it's like to have newcomers pretend like it hasn't always been this way? Well, honestly, I want to ask you this question because we have talked um, at nauseum for eight years about everything. And <laughs> it's so fascinating to hear your Final Four experience um, and I want you to, to sort of tell everyone what the Final Four was like for you um, just a couple of years ago. Um, and, and <laughs> that was kind. And what it's, what it's like for you to have new, because honestly, I am kind of a newcomer and I have stepped in some shit from time to time. And Sue's so like, that is not a correct narrative that you are uh, saying right now. So I want to hear from you about what this moment is like, your experience, and, and sort of uh, what it's like having people come in and being like, oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> That's basically well, what they like do. it's like the biggest I told you so that I've ever uh, encountered. No, it's, it's, um, it's not bittersweet, but there's two truths happening, right? On one hand, I'm thrilled for this sport. I'm thrilled for this moment. Um, on the other hand, when you start to hear things like, oh, we finally have superstars, or oh, the, th the games are finally entertaining, eh, I'm like, it kind of hurts a little bit because that's not the case. The case was you weren't watching, you weren't paying attention. It's always been there. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out. But I actually think, um, I actually think Plum, Kelsey Plum came on the show last night and probably had the line of the night, I think. Somebody, I don't remember what the question was, who knows at that point. And she was like, no, just like, oh, we were talking about welcome to the league moments where there's been a <laughs> Twitter conversation around Cooked. this. It's been hilarious. They're all Diana. And <laughs> Plum basically said, just like players have welcome to the league moments, new fans are now going to have welcome to the league moments. And really what that says to me is, new fans, come on in, come on in. And you're probably gonna have a moment where someone's gonna be like, mm, not so fast, that's not how that went down. Or, oh, not so fast, that's not really true. And I think that's gonna fall on all of us. All of us that have been here, we're just gonna have to encounter that. But that's what being new to a scene is, right? That's all it is, so I'm okay with it, obviously. All right, all right, I like it. It's so funny because when you played and won, obviously, <laughs> a championship, the arenas were sold out. Like, fans were everywhere. I mean, you guys played in a, a, a bigger arena. I think there were, Dee said last night there was 29,000 people know, There was literally 29,000. It's something like 29,960, let's say. Oh. Diana was like, really? They couldn't find 40 seats? Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> couldn't just make it a cool 30? You couldn't make it a cool 30? But yeah, yeah. we did. We played, um, my senior year, we played in the Alamo Dome, which is obviously wow. ginormous. And both the semifinals, both games, and the finals were sold out to capacity, which is 29K plus, yeah. yeah. And we're gonna get in, I'll get into this. Just yeah, we'll we're rewriting history, cool people 30. do that all the time. We're rewriting, <laughs> it's 30K. Um, and we talk about this, yeah, we're gonna talk about it a little bit later too, but that is when we say like this has been happening, mm -hmm. that is exactly what we're talking about, because that was 22 years yeah. ago. There's, there's so many um, players who are capturing the moment right now, but we would just be foolish to not talk about Caitlin Clark. And I want you to talk about 
her meeting this moment, but also how this moment was prepared for her and what went into the preparation for her to be able to do what she's done in sort of basically what all you guys have done in the yeah. landscape around women's basketball for so long. I mean, I think things just work this way in life anyways. They're cyclical, but they also, it takes momentum, it takes people building. I'm sure you could sit here and say the exact same story around soccer, right? Yeah. Michelle Akers. <laughs> Michelle Akers leads to Standing Mia Hamm. Standing on Giants, for sure. Leads to, right? This is how it goes. And I think what's great about this moment is it's, it's definitely accurate. There have been watershed moments that have turned women's basketball totally upside down in a really wonderful way in the last couple of years. And then you have current players, we're talking about Caitlin now, that have 100% grabbed the moment. The thing that is most impressive about her is she meets every moment every time her team needs her, every time she's in a press conference, you name it, she finds a way to meet that moment and show up. And that's unique to her. I mean, that, that is, there's something very difficult about that and is unique to her and it's what makes her so special. I think her game is also suited for this. She is, where I have landed with this, and we actually talked about it a little bit last night too, where I've landed with this is, Caitlin's long distance shooting is very special and nobody has really done it before. I'd like to say that someone like a Diana probably could have if they were encouraged, but that's how the game evolves. That's how, that's how it all works out, right? But what makes Caitlin, I think, different truly from any other player, she is absolutely thrilling. Every time she raises up, you are on the edge of your seat. When it goes in, you're thrilled. When she misses, you're still thrilled. Because you're like, damn, she shot that? She yeah. shot that one logo three last night? I was like, holy shit, she shot that? If she misses one, you know she's going to make the next one. So even when she misses, you're like, no worries. Bet she's going to make the next so one. So her style of play, her style of play does matter. And it's not to say that Paige Beckers and Angel Reese and Juju aren't equal, but her style, it is unique. And it does meet the moment that has been built up by all the people before it does meet it in this unique way that is so special, and it's really gonna catapult things it already has. So it's been fun to watch. Oh, it's really just unbelievable. And I think just having, having the focus and the megaphone, and whether it's TV or fans or social media, like having the attention be on women's sports right now is so unbelievable, and I... Well, what do we talk about retirement? What's the it's hardest awesome. part? Well, it's oh. besides that. <laughs> what? Yeah, besides it being awesome, what's really different is there aren't microphones in our face all the time anymore. Oh, We're devastating. Not, you know, there's not media after Honestly. practice or after game. I know you. I, I love a I press conference. I don't miss conference. it as much. I'm just going to start holding my own press conferences. Just for no reason whatsoever. I love a press conference. I'm so annoying. As I'm saying it, I'm like, you're so annoying. Why do you need so basically a press we conference just, all the time? I love them. So we just invented our own press conference. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that. A touch more press conference. That's basically what it is. Because um, we don't really get to talk the thing about the things that we're dying to talk about. So that's why we're so thrilled to be here to talk about some of those things. Yeah. Megan? This is a, tell them why you're mad. This yeah. is a, yeah, that's an that's a inside joke throwback. It's too long to, okay. The thing that I have been thinking a lot in, in concert with um, a lot of other women, obviously, in my life, is that women are saving men's sports. And there's so many different examples of this. And let me just bring them down. Um, Taylor Swift yes. and the NFL. It is the single Saving largest- Saving men's sports. The single largest free marketing situation in the history of everything. I just am like, when are they giving her 25% of the business? It's like, it's unbelievable just her being there. I also just have, I don't know how much of this is like purposeful on her part, but I'm like, you have beat them at their own game in their own stadium by their own rules. You're like the pretty white girl dating the like, you know, football player and somehow they're just like in a conniption about it. And she's like, why are you so mad? I'm just trying to watch my boyfriend play football. Is everybody okay? No, nobody's okay. <laughs> nobody's fine. No men are fine. So that's one. The Sabrina and the Steph um, shoot out. Shout out Sabrina. Just, sh she's a bucket, shoot or shoot. So she was unbelievable. And even having that whole thing sort of does more for men's sports than it does for Sabrina. It did more for Steph and it did more for the NBA. The viewership that night peaked during, during that period and during that shootout. And for me, it's like, 
them doing that with Sabrina, they now get to say, we care about the things that we know we should care about, which we've never cared about, and which we've purposely ignored for all of this time. So we're going to pretend like we're giving Sabrina an opportunity to be on the big stage. She doesn't need an opportunity. She has a signature shoe. What are we talking about here? She's like Mrs. Oregon. So again, I feel like that did more for uh, the NBA and more for Steph and his image, although I do like Steph and I think he's a good guy, but uh, you know, he's getting, he's getting these strays. Sorry. Um, <laughs> another one, the, the, the big three, not our big three in our hearts um, and minds, but there is a basketball thing called the big three. And apparently they offered Caitlin a big contract, which just honestly was such trash. It was like, you didn't even talk to her. You weren't even in a negotiation. You used Caitlin's name to coattail on her so that you could be seen as an organization or an entity that cares about women's sports. No, you don't. And it's fine. And you can now. We, we want you. Come. But like that to me, I was like, oh my gosh, what a blatant attempt to like get attention on yourself. Let Caitlin do her thing and let her get all the shine. So that's what I'm mad about. Tell them why you're mad. <laughs> Women are saving men's sports while also saving ourselves because we are just building this shit and it is so cool and it is such a beautiful thing to be a part of. You. Well, I'm mad. Yeah. No. That's a riff off Shut of up, radio. Annabelle. Yeah, it's like Hot 93.7 in Hartford. They used to have this segment where people would call in. They'd just be like, tell them why you're mad. And they'd be like, I'm mad because I had to pick up my daughter from school. My husband was supposed to. And then, and the whole 30 minutes was people just saying why they were mad. It was like the best thing when you were driving. So I'm mad because, no, I think something that we need to start changing, and thank God it is changing, with our big three, the one we were referencing, L, Janae, Drea, Give our big up. three. Something we've been talking about for a while, something I've been hitting hard on my little panel circuit, I'm sure you've seen me, um, is that the people telling the stories in women's sports need to be those that have been in women's sports. It's so important for that coverage to be nuanced, to be educated, to have experience. We're seeing it with the big three. Hopefully that can blow the doors open. There's been people who have, who have dabbled in it, but what happens usually is the talented women get plucked and put on the men's side, and that has to stop. They need to get paid doing women's sports so that they stay in women's sports, so they can cover it in an intelligent, like I said, I think nuance is the best word, because there's a difference when Megan talks about soccer, I talk about basketball, versus someone on TV who's like, mm, number 15 just made a nice move, and there's the bucket, and they won. Covering a highlight like that, it's just so uninspiring. Y'all know, know who it is. Yeah. Covering highlights like that acronym. is so uninspiring, and, and it really hurts the game. It doesn't allow for growth. Yeah. So that's really, you know, media evolving. What's that's where I'm at. What in your mind, Sue's not being discussed? What do we, what do we need to talk about a little bit more? Well, we do have a funny that. story. We'd so, okay. Who so. wants to hear a funny? <laughs> she said, tell us. Did you, did you guys we see, will. did you guys see the SNL skit recently? Guess who was in the audience? These guys. These two. These, These two. Can you imagine? We were randomly, in the audience. Just randomly. We went with a friend. So we were just, I was all about the whole day. It was so, by the way, watching SNL Live, I mean. Incredible. Watching what they do, it is unbelievable. Incredible. They use old school cue cards. That was by far my favorite part. Written out. Like Written out. And the, the people working those cue cards, they are working. It's Hustle City. It is it's so amazing. impressive. Incredible. And then they got to the weekend update. And the two of us are in this audience when he makes the joke about how nobody's watching women's sports. I mean, can you imagine this moment? Can he you imagine? Crazy. And Megan, yeah. So Megan, as the joke, quote unquote, landed, as he said it, Megan goes, boo. <laughs> Sue and I literally looked at each other like, you gotta be we're like, we were like, no, there the is way. no way. It's like the there exact is. opposite. The joke is there's no one watching men's. I know. I'm like, That's you missed the joke. The, you missed that the was layer. the joke. You missed the next layer of the joke. This isn't even funny. You know, like sometimes jokes are inappropriate and you're like, <laughs> That's, we're, not allowed, we're not saying that anymore. So that's why that's not funny. But like the structure of the joke, this was just bad. It just wasn't funny. I couldn't believe it. They had a louder laugh track on the, on the TV version too. People were not really that into it in, in the thing. Um, what else is not being talked about? I am going to 
uh, throw it to myself because I want to talk about how incredible these women's college basketball players are right now. They are so far ahead of all of the narratives that are happening. Um, I think I posted this the other day of just like, Caitlin and Angel are friends and they're rooting for each other and they're all rooting for each other. And I feel like what has been put on them in so many different ways with like, they are making a lot, I mean, what would I have done with a million dollars if I was 18? <laughs> what would you have done with a million dollars? I don't know, but it's some version of irresponsible this. Like it's not, I don't know, and it's not good, <laughs> you know? Just, they have so much money, they have so much attention. You know, you think of, the narratives that they're having to carry. Angel talked about it the other day, and some people have some words for her, and I'm like, you can just literally take yourself off TV forever for that. She has to deal with like racial issues and like racial injustice and the narratives between her and Caitlin, uh, much of what South Carolina has to deal with all the time. They're having to um, deal with the sexualization of themselves. They're having to deal with the hate that they have to deal with. Nobody watches, but then they go to their games and everybody's watching and there's a million people there. And just what they're having to shoulder at 18 while going to class, while trying to be a basketball player, while trying to just be a kid is unbelievable. So I just want to really shout out the players. It like, Let's just follow them, and they're, they're leading us exactly where we need to go, and, and I just really love to see it. I, I love players who own their own platform and who own their own narrative, and like they're the ones who are setting the stage for everyone else. They're the ones on the intimate details, and they know all the nuance, so seeing players at such a young age and just seeing women, black women, gay women, straight women, like at such a young age, owning all of that is so impressive and so important. And I just wanted to shout them out, all of them. <laughs> on that note, before we do a little bit of a stage realignment for some guests we're bringing on, we do want to do a quick little segment where we give people their flowers because mm. this moment doesn't happen without so many people before. So we have a couple names that we're gonna shout out, but start thinking, because at the end, we're gonna let y'all just yell some names. You. Whoever you wanna shout out, we're gonna give a one, two, three, and y'all can do that. But some of the names we have on here, Sedona Prince. Sedona Prince blew this shit open with her TikTok. This is not what it is today. If two years ago Sedona doesn't do this, that's unbelievable. Angel Reese, I'm gonna say it again. Angel Reese, <laughs> unbelievable. Bayou Barbie, shout out to her. Um, Dawn Staley Dawn and what Staley. she's done in South Carolina. What Dawn is building in South Carolina is generational and you couldn't give her enough flowers. Unbelievable. The fans, you guys, you've been here the whole time. You've been here the whole time. Okay, you go, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, all of the legends, um, Cheryl, Cynthia, uh, the other Cheryl, Sue, Diana, Lynette, it's pretty good. You, you know no. more of them. I mean, it yeah. goes Annie Myers, Nancy Lieberman Klein, Carol yep. Blazjowski, Rebecca Lobo starts the league. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yep. We have no time to do all the flowers. But I feel like we all know there's executives. There's Coaches. people that have been in the, in, the, oh, in the trenches trying to get these leagues off the ground. I mean, God, college coaches who have been around for forever. I mean, every single person in this room as well, like, y'all have been there. Y'all have been there. So that's why, on the count of three, whoever you got, all right, yell it out. Who you want to shout out? Who you want to give flowers to? One, two, three. Yeah. Love there that. There Love we go. That. There we go. All right. We're ready for our guests. We're just going to do a real little, little change up here. So without further ado, we would like to bring to the stage the big three. Our big three. Andrea Carter. Bring them out. Bring them out. Janae, a group. Oh, hey. we got drinks. Oh, we got drinks. We Let's got go. drinks. Let's go. We got drinks. Oh, yeah. So, oh, Megan, you're gonna go. be the. Before you go, before you go, as I announce this big announcement, yeah. please okay. give these ladies their flowers because they're a big part of this. It was just brought to my there attention. There are some thorns. You know we're not that nice all the that time. That last night's UConn-Iowa yeah. game had 14.2 yeah. million viewers. Let's go! You can put them down wherever. 
But y'all are getting some Shattered another flags. record, peaked at 17 million. Let's go! Let's That's unbelievable! Go. Whatever you need. Thank you. Thank We're you. figuring this out as we go, obviously. <laughs> so real quick, just to do some intros. Andrea, former Tennessee player, has covered Woo! college football. <laughs> okay, the one. The one Tennessee <laughs> fan. It's Justine. The one Tennessee alum. <laughs> Shout out, Justine. <laughs> um, covered college football, basketball, and the WNBA. Give it up for Drea. <laughs> Woo! L. Duncan, anchor, host, yeah. reporter, since 2003. Yeah. I'm old as shit, y'all. Woo! <laughs> Give it up. Seasoned. Experience. That's what I like to say. And then Shanae, Shanae Ogumuke, Stanford, Sparks, full-time basketball analyst. Yep. Oh wait, I got a fun little fact. In 2020, she became the first black woman and the first WNBA player to host a national sure radio did. show for ESPN. Sure did. Yep, yep. Wow. What up, people? Yep. I guess Let's I'm old-ish. I'm old-ish. You're getting there, girl. I'm getting up there. On this <laughs> You're still so young. I We're know, all so right? young. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Okay. We're gonna get into it. This is for everybody. Um, we're gonna start here and go that way. But there's obviously been a huge increase across all of the platforms, whether it's like halftime shows, are you guys going on other stuff? Um, little hits here and there. I mean, they're running y'all ragged, I know. It's, but we wanna see more of you. How long until we see a dedicated pre, mid, and post game show for, honestly, all women's sports? When, when are we seeing it? When is the Brinks truck getting backed up for y'all? <laughs> say it. Um, first of all, thank you for having us. I love you guys so much. Like, oh, we love you. These two are just like the best. When they were like, would you want to, before they could even get it out, we were like, hell yes, do what? <laughs> it's not a question. It's not even a question. Yeah, correct. We would listen to you read a phone book. Y'all are the best. Um, <laughs> So the cool thing is we actually have some executives here uh, from ESPN who, when we talk about women who for so long have been like fighting and, and, and asking and pleading and having to like bash their heads against a wall to make any leeway in this space, like two of them are in the building right now. Susie Petrowski, ESPN Woo! W, Vice yes, President. Suze. Shout, Shout out. out. Rachel Epstein, who runs ESPN Marketing, yeah, ESPN right. W. Shout out. Yep, burr, 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 burr. They would probably like to know the same damn thing. Do you guys have a big announcement that you would <laughs> like to make <laughs> on live television? We have been brainstorming though, like even just riding in the car, we've been brainstorming about like the big three on site or the big three go to this game, the big three at the Women's College World Series. Like how do we get us at different sporting events yes. to talk about those athletes and talk about those moments and just have our chemistry while talking about sports and talking about amazing athletes. So we've been we've been thinking. It all happened really fast. Yeah, yeah, I really did. So like, where's my T-shirt? Y'all hit the big it's, three. It's <laughs> been like a wild two weeks for us. It feels like we were trapped in a closet, but then film, you know, ca cameras were running and they pumped us with coffee and drinks and like we just went out there and talked hoops. And then to get the reception, to get the love, I mean, you guys are calling us a big three. We never even thought we were a thing. No. And then um, just to like share our passion for the game, I mean, Elle is a phenomenal host. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I started with ESPN about eight years ago and she's been there putting in work and like, she is so talented. Like, this is just the surface of Elle. Don't ask her to sing because then we'll be all here Elle forever. has, Elle can sing. She got some but she can dance. We saw sure. it. Yeah. Shower records is where I do my best work. I and, was, oh, yeah, no, and I'm, I want to give you your flowers. Like, Drea, like, to come on the scene and just, her analysis is next level. Her really attention is. to detail. Yeah. I call her I call her artificial intelligence. AI. I'm like I'm like bitch do you ever flub? Like you never make a mistake. She's just so you know what both of them do so well? Because I need to give them both their flowers too. Everybody keeps talking about how they're enjoying watching this, like their halftime analysis, but I get to watch the game with them. And you guys, it's all real. They're that passionate. They're that interested in not only growing the sport, but making it 
digestible, making it so that the new fans like don't feel like, I think the one thing that women do so incredibly well amongst the many things that we do well is that we're a space that is inclusive. And like, yes, you could absolutely look at some of these clowns and go, the talent's been here, duh, we've been telling you it's great. But what we do, and I think what we do well is instead say, okay, cool, you probably should have been here many years ago, but you're here now, so we're gonna make you fall in love with the game by not talking over your head or talking around you, but not calling you out by calling you up. Like, let me show you what I love about this game so much and they've done that for me they welcomed me into this space they've held my hand when I needed it they have just they're the, I'm not gonna get emotional but they are my sisters and I think what you're seeing is a manifestation of true love and respect between the three of us and everybody else at home is just like privy to it now it's amazing that's mm -hmm. amazing all right you, you actually set me up perfect you set me up perfect I'm gonna throw this one to you today how important do you think it is for there to be representation in the studio for you guys to be able to show up as yourselves authentically how important do you think that is you know i think we're at a really special point where you know our synergy as analysts as hosts matches the product on the you know court meaning like angel reese being unapologetically herself caitlin clark looking at the camera saying like yeah that's me i did that you know what i mean Paige beckers to just show up considering how many people counted them out based off of their bodies like we just feel like we want to do the game justice. And I think one thing I'm very grateful for, because we all have, quote unquote, past lives. ESPN will give you opportunities, right? But to come together at the right point, at the right time, and also just be unapologetic, unapolog unapologetically ourselves. Uh, it's been a journey. And like just speaking from my, ex my experience, I started off at ESPN back in like 2015. And like my first job was working for SportsCenter Africa. Uh, doing sports centers there, and then I... Nigeria! There she goes! <laughs> and then I remember I got an opportunity, like, today, the NBA and the WNBA stuff you do is so great, we want you to do on sports center here. And I was like, cool, and Elle was one of the first people that said, girl, like, I love how you dress, don't change yourself for anybody else. And that's the same thing for Dre, and that's the same thing for everyone that is participating in this moment. And I think we're just grateful to have allies, like executives and allies that invest, like let me tell y'all, if we didn't invest a couple years ago, we wouldn't be able to deliver the way we are delivering now. So it's not just right now where you say like, oh, the production, the resources. It started years ago where people had to go and work tirelessly to get to the moment where we feel like we could be staffed well to deliver a product that people relate with. And so I'm just grateful that we stayed our authentic selves so that when we, we we brought this synergy, I guess the big three, it just sort of feels like it met the moment. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's the biggest thing is we can be ourselves. And we're like, we're all so different, but I hope people that watch us on the stage together, they're like, oh, I wanna be on TV and be myself. I don't wanna yeah. be like Dre, I don't wanna be like Janae. I just wanna feel as good as they feel on air, but the only reason we feel as good as we feel is because we can be ourselves. If we were all trying to be something different, it would be tight. It would be tense. And then also, just the athletes. Like, covering these incredible athletes, they make me want to be better. Like, when we talk to these athletes, I'm like, okay, I have to step my game up because they're so good, I have to be good. Caitlin these literally two said, are so tired good. is mental. Yeah, I said, oh, shit. Like, right, right, well, like, she ain't had no kids yet. You know what I mean? If you have kids, that's some bullshit. She said that I was, like, spoken like a 21-year-old that can that's exist on two bullshit. hours of sleep in pixie sticks. 30-year-olds don't sleep. 30-year-olds oh, don't sleep. Oh, my God. Yeah, you don't sleep either, Jay. All right, Dre, I want to throw this one to you, um, and apparently you're an AI bot, so this, is, this would be perfect. Um, just the, it's so obvious watching you guys, the collective competence that you have across the board. Of course we're talking hoops, but all of you being black women, I think, speaks volumes. You, you said it, you, you are the product, you, you two have played, of course, but can you speak to your approach in sort of that collective competence of like, you know you're you're speaking more than just what's going on in between the lines. How do you all approach that? Jerry, I want to start with you. Yeah, I think just remembering, one, drawing on our own experiences and, and remembering things that I felt as a player and remembering things that stood out to me when I'm watching the game or I'm playing the game and trying to explain to people at home, this stuff they're doing is really hard. Not just the X's and O's, but the mm. mental aspect of letting go of a mistake or trying to do something that maybe you're not usually supposed to do, but you have to play a little bit bigger than yourselves. And so I think just our understanding of just the game but also what it means to be a person and what it means to be a human and fight through mistakes. And for me personally, basketball didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. And so just remembering what disappointment feels like, remembering what being let down feels like, remembering what 
feeling like you let your team down feels like. And so for all of us, we've overcome a lot, not just in the sport, but in life. Like we've all been through things. And so I think just remembering what we've been through and using that as we talk about these athletes, yes, we have to be critical. We're going to call things out in the game, but remembering that these are women, these are athletes, they're humans. And I think that helps all of us when we speak about them. And having the understanding too, uh, uh, watching her as a show, it's just like, you've been through it. Like, you're a woman. You're a black woman. Like, you've played college sports. You, like, know the things that nobody is saying that they're feeling out there. I mean, your comment about the club was just ridiculous. <laughs> 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 you they have give, that experience. They, they give, like, they insightful commentary. That, <laughs> I'm like, I was doing ratchet things with my friends, <laughs> which is also experience. Yeah. But you can feel it. It's like you guys are those players, and you're speaking to the really beautiful complexity that it is to be a women's college basketball player right now. Um, L, I was wondering, how have you all felt and seen this moment change your own business landscape, brand, and visibility? Read that, that one right off the card. That's a great <laughs> question, Sue. Um, so for, I would say this, like, I think <laughs> it's really interesting because, especially as women, we, a lot of times when we do get opportunities, right, we want to, like, make the most of the moment because we don't know when we'll ever be invited back in that room again and we want to have our moment we want to be memorable we want to you know like whatever it looks like and i think for me what's been so cool for me personally about this experience is remembering i didn't play basketball but i was a lifelong softball player do we have any softball players in the building yeah. let's go there's like six of you it's fine <laughs> so i keep using the analogy of like whenever i watch um the home run derby I'm, I'm always far less interested in the person that's, that's hitting the dingers than the person that they chose to throw the pitch to them because they don't just let some rando do it. They very intentionally pick somebody, whether it's their dad or their pitching coach or whatever, is to do that because someone's got to give it to you in the sweet spot so you can knock it out of the park. And I think what's been really cool about this experience in particular, working with them and humbling as well, has been recognizing that I don't always have to be the one to hit the home run. Sometimes my best role is served making sure that they are in a position to shine. And listen, they could, I could tee them up with, what do you think? And they'll get themselves there. They're fantastic. <laughs> but like, that's, I mean, they're so good. Um, but that's been uh, really cool for me. I would say I have a lot of jobs. <laughs> I do a lot of things. Um, I tend to be a jack of all trade and a master of none, and I'm okay with that. It's Cap. just a reminder. It's a reminder. I do. It's just a reminder, though, that you can work uh, smarter or you can work harder. And I feel like I've been working really, really hard, and I appreciate that. But it's also about the platforms that you're put on. You know, I can do one million things that no one will ever see, and that's okay because it helps build character. You need reps. Everything is important. What's the term? There's no small parts, only small actors, or whatever. Um, but this has been a reminder that if you do just one thing really impactful. Um, then it can mean a lot. So yes, I, the phone's been blowing up a little bit. Um, and I do think it is about us as business women because as much as I love hanging with my girls, like you do, you wanna capitalize on moments. You wanna make sure that you can ride momentum and ride waves. And frankly, I'm willing to do anything that allows me to sit on the desk with these two. We will talk about anything. And the truth is, they're so well prepared. We're so researched. Like the organized chaos that you see, the jokes, the, all those things, like they happen only because we are so prepared because we have an entire mountain of people behind the scenes who are pulling our tapes, who are pulling specific plays, who are putting us in a position to win. So it's just a reminder to like, you wanna capitalize on things, but also to recognize your role in that moment and do the best you can to serve it. I never thought someone would compare me to the great Ernie Johnson, because he's just way too classy. Like he would never sit up here with a drink and cuss. Um, <laughs> that's why we love you, you know, that's, that's why, why we I love, love you guys you. too. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, it's been really, really cool. Speaking to the chemistry and sort of teamwork, um, I'm gonna go down the line for all of you. If you, if there's you know a moment or something like, when did you guys realize like, oh shit, we're the big three. Awesome. We're the big three. Okay, I <clears throat> well, I think we had that one moment. It was it's the vibe checks. Oh yeah. It's yeah, the yeah, vibe yeah. checks. Yeah. So base what? Huh? 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So basically, okay, the way that things have been is that, you know, you're working a lot of rounds, a lot of games. The first, you know, rounds, you're, you've got like so many games that you have to pop in every 15 minutes, but then things slow down. But nonetheless, we've been working together for, let's say, four days straight. And so we're well researched. And one thing I love about working with Dre is that we, like, what you see on air is very much a give and go. She's a guard, I'm a post. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about, she's like, oh, this is the defense. I'm like, Dre, 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 calm down. All you need to do is send a double, we'll be straight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like stressed out she's the whole time. Always <laughs> stressed out on like sis all they need to do is just get a bucket like they just got to find a way but in those moments it's cool because it i don't know if you guys started seeing like the synchronicities we've been together for such a short amount of time but then like randomly we'll look Al will say something and we'll be like you know and there was a point where Al on you know air i'm sure you guys saw it was like basically one two three give your answer and we gave the same answer and i was like at that moment i knew we we're in sync yeah but it was crazy how that happened, so I don't know if everybody remembers, but basically, the referees had a terrible game. I don't know what got into the referees in this game, but they weren't doing great. So All games. It's like, hey, it's, we're coming in, for, we just did a halftime, and we're coming in for a short segment, and we're talking about, Elle was like, oh, we've got 30 seconds. I'm just going to ask you who the X Factor is for the second half. And then I look at her, I'm like... Chanae kind of laughed and was like, oh, I know who it is. And then I kind of looked at Chanae, and I was like... Huh. And then I was like, let's say it at the same time. Yep. But we didn't say what we were going to say. And Elle was like, all right, I'm going to count one, two, three. And so then we come on air, and Elle was like, one, two, three. We're like, refs. refs. <laughs> so like, in that moment, for us to be on the same page and like see the game the same way and just have that, that was like a really special moment, I think, where I was like, oh, yeah, this is a vibe. This is a vibe. And Elle knew what she was doing. And we don't always get it right, like last time. Yeah, we totally yeah, messed yeah, that up so. last time. But we, she, we're like, one, two, three, she goes, South Carolina, I'm like, Gamecock. Yeah, we messed Not it up. Not in yeah. No. They same have same. this same little same. thing that they do. It's so cute too. Like um, sometimes you can't see it because they'll like take solo, like they'll take solo shots. So Dre will be giving her analysis, and <laughs> Chanae's a wiggler. Like Chanae will be like, <laughs> <laughs> you can just see she has something. She's like. I get so you excited. Know, there's like Let so me get much, at this mic. Yeah, exactly. There's like so much eye communication. Yeah, like, you know, she'll give me the like. That's what's really cool when you have a great team. If you've ever worked on a team or a sport, I think that's what's also cool about doing sports broadcasting. We've all are former athletes in some capacity, and we've all worked together um, as teammates. And so we sort of know, like, just instinctively, like I, like I, like Drea can give me like like an eyebrow, and I, you know, and if I go like that back to her, I know she wants it. Uh -uh, or she, uh -uh. Drea, don't be giving it back to you, L. <laughs> Drea will be so deep in her layers. of of artificial intelligence analysis. That's true. She's like, the, the direct, like, the director's like, five, four. four. And I'm, like, I'm like, okay, I'll go. Yeah. And then I have one second to rap, which rap is really everything. interesting. You do it great every time. You're wonderful. <laughs> you would never I know. Pro. Second half tips next. <laughs> I will say one moment or one thing that I really like with Chanae. One of our first shows that we did together was game day. And I don't remember what we got to arguing about. Oh. It was the Michigan Caitlin Clark thing, and we had a debate on when you should write letters to Caitlin Clark. It, there was a lot. It there was, was a lot. so good. A lot went into it. I'm not going to get into it here, but we disagreed. And the way we disagreed. Why would you ever write a letter after the girl gave you buckets? See, Chin I was saying do it before, don't and Shanae was saying all. do it after. And I was like, no, that doesn't like, make don't sense. Do it. That's fine, but if you right. had to pick a time to do it, you should do it before. Yeah, before. Agreed. She only needed it. Everybody agrees with me. That's crazy. But. <laughs> In that show, Chanae and I and our ability to disagree on air in a way that was fun, in a way that was like, we've disagreed on other things a off lot. air before, and just to appreciate each other's perspective and to be able to do it in a way that's like, I hear you, that's probably the best part. Like, if Sorry. everybody could disagree that way, we'd be in a better spot. See how she's squirming? That's One what she does. Thing, and I think this is a big thing. You know, oftentimes as women, you spoke to an L, we're put in environments where we're meant to be competitive. You have to be the only one in that seat. You have to be the best analyst, all that type of stuff. I think what we're experiencing right now is the power of collaboration. And I think a great example of this has been this week. So Dre and I have been splitting a lot of hits, right? Yeah. But then we realized, you know what? We have more fun when we do things together. And so we reached out to the first takes to the sports center yeah. and said, hey, before these games, can we just come on together instead of staggering? Because it's like, we just vibe off of each other. And to be real, mm -hmm. we really are the ones that know the analysis versus right. more so, I mean, no shade, Stephen A, but like, you know, sometimes it's true stuff. Definitely. No, 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 no. Definitely. I love he, Whenever he gives someone us says the no platform. Shade. He yeah. gives us the platform, which we're grateful, but we're deep in that thing. We're in the nitty gritty. Yeah. And so to have the ability to share our platform to me, I think that's powerful. I think that's one of the first times that we've experienced something like yeah. that. And like, to me, it's part of the investment, but it's also like the allyship yeah. to say this platform matters. Do it the way you guys feel authentically. I'm going to say yesterday real quick too, like, um, we were outside freezing our ass off on the outside set. 
love ESPN, but they were like, well, it was so successful last year. I'm like, in Dallas? Yeah, in April? It's, what, it's snowing. This is Cleveland. Right? I'm like, we out here trying to get these fits off. Like, I didn't think of it. It's fashion. Um, but Chanae's, Chanae's button broke. Like right before we were gonna go on air, and so Chanae was supposed to do a hit outside, freezing. It's freezing cold. Everyone just wants to get inside, but because Chanae had to go get her button fixed, like Dre's like, I'll tap in. She tapped in. She did the hit. She sat in the cold. Like that's the kind of allyship that women su support and provide each other. It's such it's such bullshit when people act like, act like all women are catty and we're always out to compete with each other. I've really never experienced that. Like sure, there's some bad apples, but mostly we're just like a sisterhood and we look out for our sisters. And when your button Word. pops off, like someone is we got your thing. back. They, they'll stand in front of me until we get it right. You know what Correct. I'm saying? Correct. That's amazing. Uh, Shanae, you actually brought up like getting in the nitty gritty, all the storylines in college basketball right now. What are some players that you think deserve more shine? Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, so what, what are we talking about? Like anything in general? Whatever you want. What do you want to see? It's just a lot of it's been dom. Of course, a lot has been dominated by Caitlin. Yeah. A lot is dominated by sort of, you know, Iowa, LSU. Like what, what are people not seeing or not talking about enough? Get that's deep in there. Yeah, that, I mean, like, I came from a program, gratefully, I, you know, Stanford, where even though we were dominant, we feel like we didn't get a lot of the shine. And I love those moments where, like, for example, being able to tell the story of my school going up against Audie Crooks, like someone who we have seen on the scene that for a while. That was one of my favorite games of the tournament. Thank that was you. Amazing. I mean, first freshman in 25 years to put up that amount of points, 40. Doing it against, you know, my school, I know the game was different, but on my Maples Pavilion, like that's the story that really gives me life because a couple years ago, I was just scrolling, looking at highlights and I saw her, I was like, that girl, that girl can ball. I was playing uh, with the LA Sparks and we were looking at the highlights, we're like, that girl can ball. But she just waited for her time and then she had her moment. And I don't like to do this because I'm a very, very private person. I always say private until permanent, but it's permanent now. My man's back there. And hey, so- congrats. <laughs> yo, yo, congrats. Speaking, congrats. I'm the building, ally in the building. He thought I didn't see him. I saw you walking, uh-huh. But anyways, <laughs> like I wake up the next morning and you know he calls me and he's like, yo, yo, you see that girl that was balling, Audie Crooks? I was like, absolutely, uh, we worked the game, buddy, but it's all right. Uh, uh, I actually called the game. It's all right, he's a boxer, so he was in the boxing ring. But you know, for I, it just blew my mind because for so long, guys particularly would go and judge her by what she looked like and not what she does. Yeah. And now he's calling me so excited about what she does and to me that made me so happy. So like that, those are the moments that I live for. And he I I, he I. Yeah, we'll keep him. Um, it does pain me a little bit to look to next season because this moment is so incredible, but the really unbelievable thing I feel like about women's college basketball is that all of the best players, bar a couple that are going to draft, are gonna be back. So what are your most exciting storylines going into next year? Cause it, woo, we had some people who stayed. Yeah, this was, no, we definitely have people that stayed, which is great. This is, UConn just got a really, really, really big time recruit. Connecticut, when their injured players come back, like Ooh, think wait. about it, they made it to a final four Ooh. with half of their roster. I kept imploring people like, listen, when you watch UConn play, I told Stephen A. Smith, I was like, when you watch Smith's UConn like, uh -huh. play, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Say I know. it. I'm and like, when you watch UConn play, just, just glance at the bench for a second because you see these stout athletes that are all in sweatsuits. So 35 make, points per game on the bench. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, AZ Fudd, literally one of my favorite shooters in the country, and no one's really gotten to see her, her coming back, playing with Paige. I'm excited for Connecticut. I'm really excited for Notre Dame. Because Olivia Miles and oh, Hannah Hidalgo yeah. potentially playing together is going to be ridiculous. USC, number one overall recruiting class coming into play with Juju, that's going to be sick. Like there are so many sort of, and then even South Carolina, think about Malaysia Full Wiley is a freshman. Tessa Johnson is a freshman. Like those players and the recruits that they have coming in. So there are a lot of big teams that you see them now, but the pieces that they're adding, you're just like, oh, it gets better. It even gets better from here. It's crazy. Can, can I just like jump in real fast on one person that I didn't think got enough yes. attention? And I want to give a shout out to my girls here who are the ones that like, again, they don't call out, they call up. And they were the ones that were like, you know who we're not talking about enough? And certainly we won't be talking about her next year because she's moving on, but DeAsia Fair. Yeah. Like, we, I mean, I get it. Like, Caitlin has been out of this world, but like, we didn't even mention at all that she moved up to third on the all-time scoring list at Syracuse, like, you know, and there's so, so many qualifiers, like, oh, she played this amount of games, and like, so the fuck what? She scored, scored buckets in every one of them. She's a, a bucket. bucket, she's a bucket, but because 
these girls here were like, yo, we need to be talking about her on college game day. I was able to then on Sports Center say, you know what, we need to talk about Deja Fair. Like, she lost, she's not in the tournament anymore, but we're still gonna give her her flowers and show her her love. So anyway, I just want the opportunity to shout out Deja Fair, love who is that. amazing. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna bring it back to this season, go down the line. No pressure. Who's winning? Should we do it on three? Vibe check? Vibe check. Vibe check. One, two, three. Game South Carolina. Carolina. Today, there's no way, bro. There's no <laughs> way. You said Gamecocks last time But you said air. South Carolina last time you on air. Oh Next year's going to be the big two. I know. <laughs> You're out, bro. You can't well, mute us all, anymore. First of all, you said it, so I was just bobbing as you weave. It was two to one, dog. Yeah. Two to one. You lost. You That's didn't get crazy. it. Nobody South calls him the Gamecock. I you messed that up last time. I messed you it up last time. Every joke you do calls them the Gamecock. I'm not going to, you guys, I just want to, real quick, I want to talk about my own personal growth. Yes. It took, Oregon every, State. it took everything in my power on Easter Sunday not to play into the Cox versus the Beavers. It... <laughs> I, like, every time I went to go say it, I was like, it's Easter, shut up! Oh, well, you're so, better than you know, Diana. Like, you, you know what, honestly, I know, I'm sure. She's atheist. Yeah. <laughs> was she talking about how they penetrated? <laughs> she just says cock every time she gets. Not this The time. dribble penetration Not was just really time. hard on the Beavers, she, and they really gave them all they could. But the cocks prevailed, and isn't that a thing for life, you know? It's a thing to know for life. I mean, I can't think of a better three to have join us for our first Touch More Live. Yes. Thank, you thank, so you. Thank, you thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for being a part of this. More thank to come. Everybody. This is awesome. A Touch More Live in the building. <laughs> thank you, Love guys. You.